Journalists got access this week to a damaged and dangerous facility they often report on but rarely visit. The operators of Fukushima Daiichi allowed the media to tour the nuclear plant. A team from NHK went inside. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials have restricted access to Fukushima Daiichi since the 2011 earthquake and tsunami crippled the facility. Four reactors were damaged. Three of them suffered meltdowns. The plant is far from stable and radiation levels are still high. <laughs> NHK World's chief correspondent Akira Hombo was one of the journalists who entered the site. Akira, you weren't wearing a protective suit. Weren't they necessary? The site has been cleaned up to keep the contaminated particles in the air to a minimum. Mm -hmm. We wore masks, gloves, and shoe coverings as a safety precaution. Mm -hmm. We entered through the main gate and visited the control center. The radiation level climbed from 3.5 microsievert per hour to 30. The highest reading was on the ocean side of the building. That houses the number three reactor. It was over 1,300. Radiation levels remain high. We only stayed there for an hour. By comparison, for example, the background radiation level in New York is between 0.05 and 0.25. So it's quite high. Now, ultimately, the utility will have to dismantle the reactors. What kind of work is going on now at the plant? At this point, the most important task remains to cool down the melted fuel mm -hmm. inside the damaged units. The fuel could be as hot as a one megawatt heater. It's similar to heat emitted by 1,000 electric stoves in a small space. If these units aren't kept consistently cool, another meltdown could happen. Spent fuel rods are also stored in all, react all the reactor buildings. The other important task is to remove them. And this fuel also produces heat, so it has to be kept cool in a pool filled with water. Spent fuel must be cooled until it becomes stable. Work had already started at the number four unit. It houses the largest amount of spent fuel and it's the easiest area for workers to access since this reactor didn't melt down. A TEPCO plans to start the removal process in November. Once the spent fuel is removed, it will be transferred to a fuel pool built above ground. But the pool is not big enough to store all the spent fuel. So TEPCO plans to build a new facility that relies on helium instead of water as a current. How long is it going to take to remove the fuel and dismantle the reactors? Uh, TEPCO aims to remove all the spent fuel by 2021. The next step is to remove melted fuel from the reactors. Uh, they plan to finish that by 2036. The entire procedure will take until 2051. That is 40 years after the accident. What are the major obstacles? Uh, let me uh, highlight the three major issues that must be addressed. Mm -hmm. The first is to develop robots that can operate under high levels of radiation. The second is to make sure there are enough workers with sufficient skills to complete the job. The third is to dispose of the radioactive materials, including contaminated water, debris, and fuel. Beyond that, I think it's also important to consider the decommissioning process as a valuable experience. We must share what we learn from this process with the international community. It's going to be a long journey. We need to keep a cross eye on the work to make sure the right steps are taken and that information is shared.
I'll keep you updated. The, all of the work that had been done with robots to try and sort out Chernobyl showed that it's impossible to use uh, robots because the problem is that the electronic systems that robots work on cannot sustain, um, uh, they cannot function when the radiation fields get too high. Because the radio see, when radiation impinges on, 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 on a substance, on, on a new material, what it does is it creates electrons. That's why it's called ionizing radiation. It ion, it, it, it's absorbed by the material and it ionizes the material, which means that it kicks electrons out of the material. Now, the problem is that robots work on electrons. Your computer works on electrons. All of these chips, all of the, all the electronic chips that, that, that you, people use are all, uh, are all work on electrons. I and mean, you can't have a system where the electrons are just randomly being kicked out all over the place because, you know, ultimately the, the whole thing gets scrambled. And that's what they found in, in, in um, Chernobyl. And they, had a, they, had a, they, had, they tried everything. They tried the uh, German, Germans had some very fancy robots, and then they tried uh, robots from somewhere else, and they built their own robots. And none of the robots worked. They worked up to the point where they got into the high radiation fields, and they just went mad, went around in circles, and sort of fell off the side. That's why, in the end, in Chernobyl, they had to send men in. They called them bio robots, and they just they just called up 20,000 men from the reserve army list. And they, they, they put roofing lead around them and, and sent them in to pick up this stuff by their bare hands and throw it, throw it over the side. And, of course, they all died. Workers have begun removing debris from an area in northeastern Japan that's been off limits for more than a year. They're cleaning up wreckage from the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. The debris remained untouched because of radioactive contamination from the Fukushima Daiichi plant. Government officials had designated some coastal areas in the city of Minami, Soma, as being inside that 20-kilometer no-entry zone around the nuclear plant. They lifted an entry ban last April in some areas. But it took 10 months for authorities to obtain re residence approval to create a temporary storage site for the debris. Workers have now begun sorting more than 20,000 cubic meters of wreckage into burnable and non-burnable substances. Crews will take the burnable debris to the temporary storage site where it will be incinerated. I'm really glad that they are finally starting to clear the debris. I think it's a first step. I've received a lot of requests to get rid of the debris as quickly as possible. We will work hard to remove all the debris as soon as possible. Environment Ministry officials say they hope to complete the cleanup in other areas in Minamisoma by March next year. The Fukushima catastrophe is probably the worst nuclear disaster in, in human history. It's certainly worse than Chernobyl. The contamination from Fukushima has gone as far south as Tokyo. Uh, I have measured it personally in air filters from cars. At least 12 different air filters from cars were sent to me, some of them from the south of Tokyo, and many of them from 100 kilometers away from Fukushima and they contain very large amounts of radioactivity in them, high, 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 high levels of cesium-134 and cesium-137. So we can conclude without any doubt that that area, up to 200 kilometers, maybe more, away from the catastrophe, catastrophe site, has been seriously contaminated with radionuclides. But that, re that, that leads us to another problem, because what's happening now, as I'm told, is that the Japanese government are trucking radioactive material from the Fukushima disaster area, where it's contaminated, all over Japan. And even as far south as the south of Japan, we're now getting reports of, of uh, radioactivity, uh, radioactive material being taken all the way to the south of Japan to be burned. Now, what possible reason could there be for burning it as far away as that? I'll tell you the reason. It's really quite sinister and horrifying. The reason is this, that eventually when these children start to die from leukemia, from other cancers, from heart disease, from whatever, their parents are going to want to go into court. They're going to want to sue the Japanese government and they're going to want to have to say, these, in order to do that, these children were contaminated and that's why they've got high levels of cancer. But of course, the only way that they can say that they've got high levels of cancer is to have a control group in an area that's not contaminated.
for example, the south of Japan. So I believe that the project to take this material and burn it all over Japan is to destroy all of Japan, is to increase the, the, the cancer rate in the whole of Japan so that there will be no control group to which you can compare these children in the Fukushima area. So